This is an anime recap video, and in this video, I'm going to show you a girl named Nema, who reincarnates into another world and has the power to tame holy beasts and monsters. The story starts with a young girl walking down the street after leaving her office. Feeling tired from her monthly office tasks, she decides to get some sleep. As she enters her house, she slips and falls to the floor, her head hitting first. Realizing that her body isn't moving, she wonders if she's going to die. Just as she thinks so, her soul comes out from her body, and she passes away in the next moment. She then says that all she wants is to live a long life, but it turns out to be a short one. Thinking about her parents, whom she didn't even get to say goodbye to, she cries out loud, expressing that she doesn't want to die like this. Just then, her surrounding area changes, and a guy in white clothes makes an appearance in front of her. The guy tells her that her lifespan is fixed and cannot be changed, but if she helps him with the task, he will change how she dies. It turns out that the guy in front of her is a god. The god then tells her that humans are currently killing other species in a world known as Asdalan, and he wants to reincarnate her into that world so she can decide the fate of the humans. Surprised by this, the young girl informs him that she is sensitive and cannot do something like that. The god informs her that if she completes the given task, he will reward her with special powers, including teleportation and killer abilities. Irritated by this, the young girl reveals that in all her life, she only wanted to pet fluffy things, and petting fluffy animals is the only thing that soothes her exhausted heart. Understanding her feelings, God grants her special powers and tells her that when she reincarnates in another world, she will have the ability to tame beasts, monsters, and all living creatures, but her powers will not work on humans. The young girl shouts out loud and tells him that she didn't agree to his request. However, the next moment she wakes up in a house with her family welcoming her into the world. She is reborn into an Oss family, and her parents give her a name called Nefertime. Her older brother and sister call her Nema and begin praising how cute she looks. However, Nema still can't believe that she has really been reincarnated. The narrator then reveals that Nema reincarnates into a city named Larsia, which is the largest of Asdalan's three continents and is the home to the kingdom of Gash. Her big brother Ralph is a very gentlemanly guy, and her sister Karna is very energetic. Even her parents are beautiful and kind, except her father who gets cozy sometimes and can be very disappointing. She also has a dog named Dee, who always protects her, eating, sleeping, being coddled by her family, and petting fluffy animals. Since this was the life she wanted in her past life, Nema thanks God. The next day, her mother is invited to the royal palace to do some work, but she doesn't know what to do, as her husband is working and her son and daughter are at the academy. Since she cannot take Dee to the royal palace as animals are not allowed there, she asks Nema if she can be a good girl if she takes her there, and Nema happily agrees. On the way to the royal palace, Nema sees people interacting with each other with happiness and joy, and thinks that they don't look like people who will pursue others. At the palace, her mother casts a protective spell on Nema, just to make sure that she remains unharmed while she completes her work in the royal palace. After her mother's departure, Nema sees a bird flying and follows after it, but the bird is too fast, and she gets tired following it. Just as she is about to take some rest, some animals surround her, and she begins to pet them. However, their moment is short-lived as a giant white tiger emerges in front of her. Due to her god-gifted powers, the giant white tiger begins to lick her instead of attacking, and Nema hugs him while feeling his fluffy body. The white tiger then puts her on his back and takes her for a ride to the royal palace. Just then, a boy appears, calling the giant white tiger Lars, and telling Nema that Lars may behave well, but he is still a beast and asks her to get down from his back. He takes Nema from his back and holds her in his arms, but Nema hesitates and wants to be put back. The boy gets surprised at the behavior of Lars since he hasn't liked anyone more than him before. He asks Nema about her parents, and she tells him that she belongs to an Oss family, and her name is Nema. Hearing the name Oss family, the boy takes both of them to an office. There, she meets his father, who is already working in the office. Her father asks her what she is doing in the royal palace, and the boy informs him that he rescued her while she was playing with Lars in the yard. Shocked at this, her father hugs her and then thanks the boy for saving his daughter, calling him his highness. It turns out that the boy is the prince of the kingdom of Gash. He asks Nema to say thank you to the prince, and she obliges, albeit in an ill-mannered way. Just then, the man who was sitting next to her father comes to her, and she formally introduces herself to him. It turns out that the man is Galdi Rus Gash, the king of the kingdom of Gash. Seeing how well-mannered she is, the king takes a liking to her and tells her to come visit the royal palace next time, and he will let her play with Lars again. Later, her mother shouts at her for leaving the assigned room and playing with the Sky Tiger, which is the actual name of the Sky Tiger. Nema tells her that she is friends with Lars, and the king himself invited her to play with him the next time she visits the royal palace. 
However, her mother asks her to promise her that she will not meet the Sky Tiger when anyone's watching, as he is a special holy beast who uses elemental powers. When asked about elemental powers, her mother tells her that the magic spells they use draw out their mana, but the holy beasts use the divine power that fills this world, and using that energy is known as elementalism, and they use it to bond with their masters. Hearing her mother's words, Nema gets sad but promises her that she will do what she said. However, her parents get shocked at the sudden turn of events, as they thought that only animals are fond of her but can't believe she tamed a sky tiger, realizing that she has some kind of special powers. The next day, Nema arrives again at the royal palace but this time to observe her brother and sister at school. The maids take her to the spectator area along with her family to watch the training session. Nema sits on the couch and asks about it. Her father tells her that teachers of the school use powerful magic to create soldiers, and the students command them with their mana to battle each other. Just then, the battle between her brother Ralph and one of the students of the school kicks off, and Ralph easily defeats him with his magic powers. Nema cheerfully congratulates her brother for winning the match, but she realizes that she has to go to the bathroom. After returning from the bathroom, she comes across a boy named Tristan who is bullying her brother and telling him that he will easily beat him in the next match. Angered at this, Nema makes fun of him by calling him a dummy who doesn't even know his place. Hearing these harsh words, the boy tries to attack her, but just as he is about to do it, the prince intervenes and stops him at the moment. The prince angrily asks Tristan why he raised a hand against a child, but he fearfully tells him that he will never do such a thing in his life. Hearing this, Ralph asks the prince how he knows about Nema, to which the prince tells him that he helped her the other day when she was lost at the palace. When Nema retaliates, the prince asks her to become his plaything, and in this way, she can come and go from the palace whenever she wants. Nema happily agrees, and the prince trolls her for calling him a brute. He even informs Tristan that Nema is under his protection and if he ever lays a hand on her, he will perish him on the spot. After that, the prince looks into Nema's eyes, which are black, and wonders about it since this world does not have anyone with it. They then go to the training arena, and this time, it is her older sister Karna's turn. Her test involves using magic to defeat a monster summoned by a magic circle. She then activates the magic circle and summons a mighty holy beast, a fire dragon. Shocked at this, the commander asks the teachers to protect the students, while her father informs the prince that Karna's skill with fire is high but her skill with water is low. Seeing her sister in trouble, Nema asks her to run, but she decides to fight the holy beast. Just then, Nema runs off and jumps to the training field, and before she can fall off, an anonymous magical energy saves her. She then runs towards the fire dragon and asks everyone not to attack him. The what? cutest girl, Nema, stops the guards from attacking the dragon. They avoid her, and the fire dragon's attention shifts towards her. He wonders why this little girl is here because it's not the place for her. As Nema talks with him, he tells her that they forcefully summoned him and questions why he would let them go if they are hurting him. However, she informs him that despite having powerful water magic and tough scales, he can get hurt while fighting with others, and she can't bear this cruelty. She expresses her wish to pat his scales, surprising the fire dragon, as she is not terrified. Inspired by her innocence, he bends down so that she can touch him. Watching this, the guards begin to take action, believing the dragon will hurt her, but the prince stops them, informing them that Nema is up to something. Just as she is about to touch his body, she believes his body to be hot, but opposite to her expectations, he is cool and smooth. The fire dragon then tells her that when she turns older, he will recognize her as his master. Before leaving, the fire dragon gives her an orb, saying that it will connect both of them with each other. The fire dragon understands that it would be difficult for Nema to keep the orb with her, so he tells her that she can change its form into whatever she wants to keep around her. After thinking for a while, she turns it into a teddy bear. The fire dragon then tells her that the orb connects them mentally, and she may be able to use his magic through it, which means it will help her when she is in danger. Hearing this, Nema thanks him for his kindness and asks about him, to which the dragon reveals that he is Saul and then leaves. After that, her sister, Karna, holds her in her arms and apologizes for putting her in danger. The prince also takes part by squeezing her cheeks and is glad that she is okay. Nema realizes that despite being clumsy and brute, the prince is worried about her. Watching the situation, the prince orders her father, Daeland, to take care of Nema and find a solution to this situation, believing that power-hungry people will come after her. Hearing this, Daeland believes that if something ever happens, he will kill all of them. This shocks Nema, who believes that the incident is turned into something big. Later, they are warmly welcomed into the court and given an amazing introduction. Many royal personalities are present in court and looking at them, causing Nema to get nervous. Just then, the king and queen arrive, and they discuss the case. The king is well aware of Nema's pact with the fire dragon, but Nema's father clears their misunderstanding, informing them that it is not a formal pact, and she is only eligible to use the power when she is threatened, and confirming that she will not use this power to threaten the kingdom. However, to clarify the king's doubt, 
He swears by his name, which if he breaks it, he will die. Emma worries about her father and realizes they have gathered to talk about this serious matter. During the discussion, the Royal Magic Research Center director Seltzer discloses that a magic circle is present, and the girl who has performed the magic is correct, but she hasn't made any flaws, and the fire dragon was forcefully called. He reveals that it was God's will, and it has nothing to do with Karna. Listening to this, Nemi yells in her heart, realizing that God hasn't left her alone in this world. She believes God has done this purposely because he wants her to be familiar with all the creatures of this world, but she isn't interested in knowing about them. The high priest also shares his opinion that the holy beasts are the best things that ever happened to this kingdom, and the divine dragon appearing here is a good omen for the kingdom and can boost their spirits, allowing them to rule over the entire world. Hearing the high priest's words, Nema believes that God was talking about these kinds of people who use such flowery language to please the king and brainwash other people. Despite her doubts, she keeps everything aside because her sole purpose is to accompany fluffy animals. While contemplating these matters, the brute prince notices Nema's expression. She feels irritated by this and shoots a furious look at him. On the other hand, the brute prince realizes that she is getting bored with the current situation. So, he suggests to Nema to play with Lars, which the king of the kingdom also approves. Hearing this, her eyes light up with happiness. Lars arrives, and the brute prince whispers something in his ear, causing him to take Nema out of the court. Nema holds his tail, and Lars takes her to his luxurious place. There, she grabs a piece of meat that was already there and offers it to the sky tiger. Without wasting a single second, Lars eats the piece, sparing her tiny hands. Her hands become wet, shocking the people around her who wonder how she is able to feed Lars with her bare hand. Seeing this, a maid gives her a handkerchief, which she takes and says thanks. Watching her cuteness, the maid becomes pleased and runs away, stating that she is not worthy of her kindness. Nema ignores it and continues petting Lars and falls asleep on his body. Just then, his family arrives and sees her sleeping on Lars. Her father, who adores his daughter, admires her beauty as she snoozes. Other generals, who are well aware of the fire dragon's appearance, understand the importance of her pact with the dragon for their land. They want to keep a guard on her to prevent any harm. Nema's father, who can hear everything, is fed up with their selfish conversation, knowing it could harm his daughter, but he prefers to leave, as others express their desire to use Nema for their evil purposes. Just then, the high priest arrives and greets everyone. The high priest shares his intention to take Nema under his supervision, aiming to make her a holy maiden through education. Nema's father, aware of the potential manipulation, refuses to hand his daughter over to the high priest's supervision. He rejects the idea, knowing the high priest might turn her into a puppet for his own purposes. The father refuses, believing that the idea of turning his daughter into a doll is insulting to him. Hearing this, the high priest attacks Daland and his wife, sharing his doubts about Nema not being their daughter. He informs them that she does not bear much of a resemblance to their other two children. Just then, Daelin's wife, Kula, interrupts their conversation and tells him that she has exchanged the true name vow with her husband, and if she breaks it, she will face divine punishment and bear the mark of fallen on her forehead. She then shows her forehead, shocking the high priest. However, the high priest still doubts her and believes that only Duke Daelin perhaps took the true name vow. However, Kula clarifies that she took the oath in the presence of the king, informing everyone that if anyone doubts her again, it would mean challenging the king himself. Later, Lars wakes up Nema by licking her face. She opens her eyes and looks at her parents. They deliver the good news that no one scolds her, and the divine beast has granted her power, so she shouldn't be frightened. At the same time, the king holds Nema in his hands and grants her permission to come to the palace anytime, allowing her to go wherever she wishes. After that, the brute prince takes Nema to his room and intends to introduce her to other fluffy animals in the palace. Just then, Gwyn, the second brigade of the royal guard, arrives and greets the prince. The brute prince tells her that if something ever happens while he is away, she can rely on Gwyn. Nema, surprised at his amused personality, greets him and informs him that she already saw him in the court. Just then, the brute prince orders Gwyn to take Nema into the dragon's stable, shocking Gwyn. He wonders why the prince is sending her to a dangerous place like the dragon stable. Moving with guards, Nema feels ashamed of herself, questioning why she needs their protection. However, she proceeds because she can do anything for fluffy animals. On the way, she meets Dan, the head of the dragon stable. His clothes are ordinary, as he takes care of dragons voluntarily. He stoops down and greets Nema, causing her to believe that kind people also exist in this world. Observing his appearance, Gwyn criticizes him for not wearing a royal dress like him, and they both begin to exchange hurtful words. It is then revealed that both Gwyn and Dan were classmates at the academy and often messed with each other. To solve this matter, Nema turns their attention to her by pulling their trousers. They realize what they have done to her, and Dan holds her hand, asking her to be cautious, as there can be more dangerous dragons than she imagines. He then shows her some dragons, revealing that the dragons flying in the air are called Lind Blooms, while those running without wings are called Lindra. 
These dragons live in deserts and lake areas, choosing their habitat based on their preferences, preferring these areas as their homes. Seeing this, she desires a head pat on the dragon's head but realizes that Dan is unlikely to allow her. Just then, a red beam appears on her body, attracting the dragons and causing them to rush towards her. Since this has never happened, Dan and others have become vigilant. Dan takes Nema away, but the leader dragon stops them. Nema steps forward and greets the dragon, calling her Gizzle and informing him that, due to Saul's orb, she can talk to them. She shares her wish to play with all of them, and Dan agrees. After that, Gizzle bends down, allowing her to sit on him. Without wasting a single second, the dragon flies away and takes her to the sky leaving Dan and the others shocked at this sudden turn of events. Gizzle believes that Nema is human but can sense the orb of the fire dragon and knows that she hasn't made a pact with him. Nema reveals that the orb was given to her by the dragon himself, and due to that, she can communicate with other dragons. She greets other dragons, and they welcome her as a maiden dragon. She makes a flower band for the little dragon, but he prefers to eat it. She starts to chase him, while the other little dragons join them, thinking they are playing. She also plays with them in the water and has a lot of fun. While Nema is enjoying her time with the dragons, Dan and Gwyn discuss her. Dan, who knows Gizzle's nature, reveals that, as the leader of dragons, he never lets anyone onto his back. However, Gwyn clarifies his doubt and reveals that Nema was the one who saved the kingdom from the fire dragon. Just then, she returns with Lars and another dragon, shocking everyone. Dan wonders how she can command holy beasts and other dragons, believing that she is not an ordinary girl. The next day, Dan takes Nema to the Beast Knight stables, which have lots of rare animals. There, they meet a guy named Lestin Ogma, who is the captain of the Beast Knight's Legion. Upon seeing how simple Nema is, Les wonders if she is really the one Dan described to him earlier. It turns out that Dan told him everything about Nema and how she is able to tame the head of the dragons, Gizzle, who never even lets Dan sit on his back. Realizing that he has a little charmer in his stable, he takes this as a challenge and begins to gather more information about her powers. He takes Dan and Nema to the stable of horse, which is maintained by magic so they can live their best lives. Les introduces Nema to the leader of the herd, Yuaz, but her taming powers don't work on him as Yuaz rejects her greetings. She asks Yuaz to play with her, but he also rejects this offer too. Seeing this, Les reveals that Yuaz is a kind horse but sometimes can become selfish and does not listen to anyone, causing Yuaz to give a sad look. Nema, after hugging Yuaz, reveals that Yuaz is the leader of the herd and does not like anyone he doesn't know getting close, meaning he acts purposely just to avoid humans going near to his herd. Hearing this, Les hugs Yuaz and apologizes to him for not understanding his true feelings, making Nema happy too. After that, both Dan and Nema sit on a white horse named Hugh, who is a very docile horse and is perfect for inexperienced riders. They head towards the beast stables to see more animals, and Nema can't wait to pat and play with them. Upon the way, she encounters the babies of a giant burr and asks what they are doing while digging a hole in the ground. Les reveals that when they get hungry and don't have food, they dig a hole and look for bugs to eat underground. Just then, some of the babies begin chasing after them, to which Les reveals that baby giant burrs want someone to play with them, and they chase everyone they spot and due to this, a number of beast knights get injured every year. Shocked at this, Nema yells out for help, and Yuaz, who has had enough of this, lets out a big roar, causing the giant burr babies to flee from the scene. Nema thanks Yuaz for his help, and they head towards the beast stables. Upon stopping in the nearby area, Les shows them a group of wakas, considered the fastest animals on the land and used as messengers in emergencies. Hearing the word fastest, Nema yells and wants to ride on one, but Les reveals that she needs a great deal of training to handle the wakas' speed. However, a reincarnated girl persists, causing Les to agree to her request. They sit on one of the wakas, Yoshu, and Nema feels how smooth its skin is. Les then tells her about wakas and how to handle their speed, informing her that if she grabs him too hard, he will stop on the spot. Happy at this, Nema wonders how fast he can go but tells him to go as fast as he can. Just then, Waka charges with his speed, causing Nema to wonder what's going on as she cannot breathe. Seeing this, Les believes that if this goes on, she might end up being unconscious. So, he activates a protective spell and casts it on her, causing Nema to experience the speed of the Waka. Upon reaching their destination, Nema states that she will not ride on Wakas again, but Les informs her that this was about 50% of its top speed. Seeing Nema's condition, Dan laughs at her, causing her to argue with him. Suddenly, a Glayhawk arrives and sits on Les's hand, who reveals that they use them to exchange letters. The Glayhawk gives him a letter, and upon reading it, Les reveals that one of his subordinates has caused some trouble in the stable, so they need to head back immediately. However, a reincarnated girl, who wants to play with more fluffy animals, says that she is not done yet and asks Dan to go to the dragon stables. Upon reaching the place, Les is told that a white moose, a rare breed in the capital, has escaped. Hearing this, Les forms a team and orders them to search for the white moose. After they leave, he thinks about the bad things happening to him so far today, including the white moose escaping, 
Yu was taking a liking to Nema, and Yoshu, one of the Wakas, obediently obeying her orders. However, his bad day becomes even worse as Nemer returns with Lars while riding on the back of a white moose. When asked how she tamed it, she reveals that she was returning home after visiting Gizel and found it on the way. Hearing this, Les can't believe that she was able to tame the white moose as well but asks her to contact him if this kind of situation happens again to which she happily agrees. Just then, Les believes that Nema must have the power to be loved by any kind of animals, but feels jealous as he wanted this power for himself since he also adores animals too. The next day is our reincarnated girl's birthday. Her parents wish her on her birthday and want to grant one wish of hers, to which Nema reveals that she wants to go to the city. Hearing this, her father, Daland, first disagrees, saying how dangerous it is for her to go alone. But her mother, Kula, tells her to go with Paul and Karna. After that, she heads to her first shopping, and upon reaching, she wonders how beautiful the market is and how many shops are there. Karna tells her that the royal capital is split into four distinct areas, including the noble district, commercial district, common district, and industrial district. This was the wish of the first king, who wanted the city to look beautiful even from the sky. After hearing this, they head to the nearby food shops, and seeing how tasty the food looks, Nemo wants to eat it. She asks her sister to teach her how to use money in this world, to which she reveals that the smallest units of currency are called rai, and ten rais are equal to one copper ingot. Hearing this, she heads to the nearby chicken fried shop and orders three leg pieces, which cost her three copper ingots. After paying the shopkeeper, she heads to her group and gives one to Karna, one to Paul, and the remaining one to her pet dog Dee, revealing that due to her birthday, she wants to treat everyone as special. Suddenly, she smells something nice and sweet and wonders where it's coming from, but sees the cookie-like things in the nearby shop. When asked about them, Paul reveals that they are Pepe, and when they fry the boiled dough, it puffs like that. Hearing this, she runs to the shop and orders for Pepe, revealing that she wants to give it to D2. Seeing her cute smile and look, the shop lady tells her that if she buys 20 Pepe, she will add extra 4 in it with the price of a 1 copper ingot, to which our reincarnated girl happily accepts. She shows Pepe to her sister and informs her that she also bought for mother, father, and everyone at home too. Hearing this, Karna hugs her and says that she is the sweetest little sister in the world. After that, they stop at a nearby tea shop, and one of the girls sitting at the table greets her. The girl, who knows the Oss family, starts making fun of Nema, revealing that she has no magic and doesn't even look like her parents, not to mention her creepy black eyes. However, our reincarnated girl's sister scolds her and tells her that her little sister is amazing. Even the royal family accepted her, and she cannot talk to a noble girl who does not even match the power of her family. After that, they head home, and Nema wonders how strong her sister is. Upon opening the door to her room, everyone is present, and they wish her a happy birthday, revealing it to be a surprise for her. Nema, realizing how busy they are with their work but still come to wish her, starts crying and thanking everyone, believing that this is the most amazing day of her life. They then celebrate her birthday, and the queen gives her a necklace and some powerful magic stones. The brute prince also arrives and gives her a magical bracelet, telling her to keep it around her every time as it will protect her from enemies. The others also give Nema gifts, and Les, the captain of the Beast Knight Legion, gives her a Rainhawk, who is related to the Glayhawk. Les reveals that yesterday, she was looking at the Glayhawk, and since she cannot handle him because of his big size, he decided to give the Rain Hawk to her. After the party, she states that this was the best birthday she ever had and names the Rain Hawk Nox. The next day, our reincarnated girl plays with Nox and teaches him how to fly far away in the sky, believing that they are already best friends. While she spends time with Nox, Les and Dan are in awe that she is able to train him in such a short amount of time and believe that her powers are beyond their imagination. Les asks Nema to give Nox a chance to go further in the sky tomorrow, but our reincarnated girl cries and reveals she has to start studying from tomorrow and might not be able to come to this place much anymore. The next day, Nema is introduced to her tutor who comes into her room and formally introduces herself as Annalie de Sa. Nema looks at her clothes and minimal makeup and believes that she is a picture-perfect lady. However, her thoughts turn to dust as Annalie reveals her true identity after her butler leaves the room. Annalie informs Nema that she needs to work on her manner of speech, revealing that she calls her mother and father Mama and Papa, which our reincarnated girl agrees with. But to her shock, Annalie hits her with the stick, causing Nema to glare at her. Seeing this, the tutor tells her that she is from a noble family, and nobles must never let their emotions show under any circumstances. Before they can go any further, the door knocks, and out comes Nema's butler who is holding tea for the tutor. Seeing the butler, Annalie returns to her fake kind persona and informs him that they have already become good friends. After that, our cutest girl's hellish studying life starts as Annalie tortures her with sticks and tries to make her a noble lady. She even mocks her by revealing that she taught her brother and sister and they were the talented students she had in a long time. 
but vows to turn Nema into a proper lady too. After the boring lecture is over, Nema is tired and goes to her room. She thinks about her tutor and believes that there's no way she treated Ralph and Karna like that, revealing that she might be making her a fool. She explains that if she tells all this to her father, he will surely expel her from the kingdom but mentions that she needs to overcome this by herself and vows that she will not let her win. The next day, Annalie hits her with the stick, telling her that she is slouching yet again. However, our reincarnated girl, instead of giving an angry glare, replies with a cutest smile and informs her that she will be more careful in the future. Mema's cute smile impresses her, but she reveals that that is her business smile, which she learned at work in her past life. Despite this, our reincarnated girl wonders how long she can keep it up. After dinner, Nema leaves the dining room with a sad face, and upon seeing her, her family wonders what happened to their girl, as she never left her plate without cleaning it. Her mother Kula follows her and inquires what's bothering her, but our reincarnated girl, instead of telling her mother about Annalie, runs away to her room. Before she can enter her room, Ralph catches her with his magic and informs her that instead of fighting with him, she should think about the words she needs to say to their mother, as she is in anger mode, which Nema declares 10 billion times scarier than Annalie. Just then, her mother informs her that if her recent sad look is because of Annalie, then why didn't she talk to her about it? To this, Nema reveals that she wants to fight her own fights, and if she told her, then her mother would have interfered in her fight and made her tutor quit. Hearing this, Kula pats her with her finger and reveals that Annalie is known for being a perfect lady in the kingdom. If she challenges her on her own terms, she won't stand a chance. However, she tells her to learn everything from Annalie and acknowledge her opponent, otherwise, she will not overcome this fight. Before our reincarnated girl can say anything, her brother, Ralph, uses a magic spell on her which drains the negative emotions from her body and makes her lighter again. He also promises her that he will not interfere in her fight but vows to heal her if she gets caught up in negative emotions like this. Hearing this, Nema smiles and vows to win this fight, also expressing that her brother is a really nice guy and knows how to make her happy. After one year, Nema turns into a smart girl who knows how to formally speak, eat, drink, and behave with others. This causes Annalie to acknowledge that she is from a noble family very close to the royal family. Seeing her brightest side, Nema thinks about Annalie and believes that she hasn't seen this look of hers in a year but wonders what's bothering her. She asks Paul about her, and he gives her a note revealing that some of her relatives are ardent believers in the Church of Divine Creation. To this, our reincarnated girl believes that she is from a priest family who talks rubbish and believes that he is the messenger of God. Wanting to know more about the Church of Divine Creation, Nema asks Annalie about the Aiku Kingdom, which is struggling due to a drought. She reveals that due to the drought, Aiku has lost many lives and is led to a shortage of food. They went to many neighboring countries and churches for help, but only Gash along with two other countries decided to help them. She then asks why the Church of Divine Creation hasn't done anything for them, mentioning that they should help them. However, Lady Annalie informs her that their priestesses received a divine revelation from God, mentioning the High Priest. The revelation states that Aiku Kingdom has angered God and helped the Beast People. Due to this, as messengers of God, the Church of Divine Revelation cannot help them, even if they die from the drought. When our reincarnated girl inquires about whether she met the Beast People herself or not, she replies with a hellish smile, revealing that no one wants to meet them as they are too terrifying to approach. Hearing those words, Nema comes to the conclusion that she was feeling awkwardness not because of her strictness, but due to her being suckered into wrong beliefs. Nema, with an angry look, informs her that she would never have imagined that someone like Annalie could be uncouth. Expressing her frustration, Annalie hits her on the cheek, to which our reincarnated girl realizes that this is not education but violence because she feels that she insulted her. Just then, Nema tells her that as the proud daughter of the Oss family, she wants to become a fine lady who can help others even if she does not know them. She does not want to bring shame upon her father. Annalie then tells her that political topics must remain in the hands of dukes and kings, and they are not the ones to discuss it. However, Nema tells her that she wants to teach her about how to become a fine lady, a lady who has a great sense of fashion and knows how to please gentlemen and stay silent in their company. But Nema wants to be true to herself and asks Annalie how the ladies of this world make the gentlemen happy, to which Annalie runs away without saying anything. After this incident, Daleland inquires about her cheek, but Nema tells him not to harm Annalie as she wants to win this fight by herself. However, her father gives Annalie a warning not to do this in the future. After another year, our reincarnated girl turns five years old, and Daleland tells her that the Oss family is in charge of the northern lands of the Gash Kingdom. He has some work to do there, so he wants Nema to come with him, believing that this will help her expand her horizons. Our reincarnated girl happily agrees. After that, they gather around a magic circle, a device used to travel between major cities and places, and teleport to the northern lands of the Gash Kingdom. Upon reaching there, they are welcomed by a man named Warnus Gilva, the proxy lord of the city Arsenta. Nema formally introduces herself and runs to the other side. 
Upon opening the door, she can't believe her eyes as she finds herself in a beautiful city where snow is falling. It turns into a glacial shower after the snow catches up to her. However, Daelin quickly warms her with his healing magic. He then informs her that in the northern lands, the weather is extremely cold, and they must dress properly to save themselves from catching a cold. He gives her warm clothes, making our reincarnated girl even cuter. They then head to their destinations to do royal capitals work while enjoying their travel on the way. But our cutest girl only wants to play with rare beasts and monsters there. Upon arriving at their destination, they are welcomed by the mayor of the city, who takes them to his office. They serve a delicious meal for them, causing our reincarnated girl to blush. However, Daeland informs the mayor that he heard about the casualties caused by the monsters and is here to make outpost buildings for the knights. This will help withstand the monsters and cull them away from this area. Not only this, Daeland tells Nema that he wants to use her dragon powers to eliminate all the monsters in the forest. This causes our reincarnated girl to panic who believes that Saul's power will make the forest go up in flames. Hearing this, Daelin suggests Nema seek help from Saul and inquires about the identity of the monsters residing in the Needlefrost forest. She calls Saul, who, upon checking her location, reveals that there shouldn't have been any monsters in the first place. Now, goblins and some rare frost spiders live there, but they reside much farther to the south. Hearing this, Daelin gets angry and believes that this must be the wrongdoing of some men. He vows to solve this issue by himself. However, our reincarnated girl thinks that this must be the work of- The next day, our reincarnated girl takes out the protective pendant and knife she received on her birthday, revealing that she didn't realize she would be using them soon, but puts them in her bag. Suddenly, Knox arrives, and she tells him that she will be counting on him in their trip to the forest. They then leave the village and head to the forest. On the way, one of the villagers informed Daelin that he has been hunting in this area for decades but has never seen anything like this before. Hearing this, Daelin, who's leading the group and has been traveling for many hours, tells his group to take some rest and eat the lunch they brought. Just as they decide to sit, they hear some voice coming from the nearby tree and quickly back away. One of the knights goes forward and cuts the tree with his sword but gets surprised after seeing that it was only a little rabbit lying on the ground. Hearing the name Rabbit, Nema believes that his skin must be fluffy, but upon reaching there, she sees that he is injured. Just before she can touch him, the rabbit runs away, causing our reincarnated girl to wonder what happened to her powers. However, she runs to the forest to help the little guy, revealing that she cannot leave the little creature alone even if he doesn't like her. Just then, she sees the rabbit and goes toward him, but before she can react, the rabbit jumps on her and hugs her. This causes our reincarnated girl to believe that her powers are not lost, and she still has her taming abilities. She then decides to head to the group to treat the wounds of the wounded rabbit. But the next moment, someone traps her inside a net, and Nema goes unconscious. After waking up, she finds herself surrounded by some monsters and wonders who they are. But after seeing them up close, realizes that they are goblins. One of the goblins comes near to here and tries to eat the rabbit, but Nema stops him, saying that she does not want him to eat the rabbit. Hearing this, the goblin steps back and wonders what he should do, while our reincarnated girl, looking at goblins, believes that they are cute too, but suddenly realizes that they are monsters. Just then, two goblins take her to the nearby cave where she finds a boy and a girl named Nino and Pino inside. Nema asks if they had been kidnapped like her, and the girl confirms but scolds her for asking rubbish questions. The boy informed her that the goblins also kidnapped some adults along with them, and they are being kept in other areas. Hearing those words, our reincarnated girl realizes that they need her help, and she asks Saul to help them with his magic, but Saul informs her that he cannot attack goblins because they are such lowly magic beasts. He tells her that she can use his magic with his will. But for that, she needs to bring out fire from her mouth. Hearing this, Nemer rejects his offer and believes that his father and the villagers will save her. Just then, Nemer's stomach begins to growl like an alarm, revealing that she is hungry, but realizes that both the boy and girl are also hungry. Seeing this, she decides to head out and look for some food but gets shocked after knocking into a goblin. However, our brave girl, instead of being frightened, asks the goblin if he has some food because they are hungry. The goblin, seeing the cutest girl in front of him, obliges to her request and gives her a fruit, which she finds not edible after finding it bitter. The goblin then peels the fruit and gives it to her, and this time, our reincarnated girl finds it sweet, revealing in blushing humor that she hasn't eaten a sweetest fruit like this before. She then asks for more fruits because she wants to give them to Nino and Pino but realizes that she does not know how to skin it off. Just then, she takes out the knife she received on her birthday and peels the skin off with it. 
The goblins, who were seeing all this, also try the same and find it very helpful, and in no time, they become friends with our reincarnated girl. Suddenly, she hears some roaring sounds in the cave, and upon reaching, finds a hobgoblin there. The hobgoblin asks the little ones not to bring human children to the cave, causing our reincarnated girl to realize she can have a conversation with him. Nema then asks why they kidnapped them, to which the hobgoblin tells her that it is in their nature, but they protect the lost children and take good care of them even if they are human children. Hearing this, our reincarnated girl then asks why they attack humans, to which the hobgoblin informs her they do that just to survive in this world. When asked the reason behind this, the hobgoblin reveals that they were thrown out of their forest by humans. And not just goblins, the humans also throw kobolds, orcs, and ogres too. He explains that the humans kept pursuing after them, and those who weren't willing to fight or couldn't take the cold perished one by one. But because they were weak, so they kept running and ended up in this forest. Hearing this, our reincarnated girl realizes that this is all human's fault, and decides to tell her father about it but wonders what she should do about them, realizing that she cannot leave them alone. She asks if they want revenge against the humans, to which the hobgoblin reveals that they just want to go back to their old way of life, hunting and being hunted alongside animals and monsters and go back being part of the forest. Hearing this, Nema believes that these goblins aren't from this forest and if they settle here, it will upset the ecosystem of this forest. Just then, she has an idea and whispers it in Hobgoblin's ear. The Hobgoblin likes her idea and asks if they can kill the humans, to which Nema informs him that in the battle, only the fittest survive but thinks that she can't ensure if the humans will survive, but believes it should work out if they form a contract. Hearing this, the Hobgoblin agrees to help her out, but Nema informs him that before this, they need to solve one more problem, which is her father, and if he gets here, he will kill all the goblins with his power. So, she tells him that they need to come up with a plan to make sure her dad will listen to them. After that, she takes the fruit and gives them to Pino and Nino. She tells them about her idea, and for this to work out, they need to get out from this cave. Nino hesitates, saying that goblins are monsters and they don't need to help them out. However, our reincarnated girl believes that goblins had their reasons for doing what they did, and she wants to save them. But if her father finds her out, he will not listen to them. So, she asks for their help too, saying that they just need to become their decoy and pretend like they are being chased by goblins. Pino hesitates, saying that he cannot put her sister's life in danger, even after hearing from Nema that she will cast a protective spell on her. Just then, Nino steps up and informs her that she will help her out, saying that despite being younger than them, she is still trying to protect the lives of goblins, and she will do everything she can to make sure it happens. Hearing this, Nema hugs and they share a sweet moment with each other, even Nema thanks her for helping her out. After that, according to the plan, Pino and Nino run the forest while being chased by the goblins, and quickly get the attention of the villagers. Seeing this, Dalen tells his knights to protect the children from goblins, which our reincarnated girl already revealed in her plan. According to the plan, the children head towards the villagers, while the goblins upon seeing them head back to their cave. The knights followed them but came upon the hobgoblin and stepped back after seeing it. The hobgoblin informs them that he will release all the children, and before he can say any further, Daland activates his magic and fires at him, but Nema shields him with Saul's magic. Seeing this, Daland realizes that it is Saul's magic and asks Nema to come out. Nema, realizing that her plan has been failed, requests his father not to attack and he quickly agrees. However, upon reaching, Daland changed his mind and tells his knights to attack the hobgoblin with their magic, but Nema still manages to save with Saul's magic. Nema then runs towards the hobgoblin and begins protecting him, revealing that it's not their fault, and they were thrown out of their forest by the humans, and had no choice but to end up here. She then tells her father to listen to what she is saying, and Dalen finally agrees. Just then, Nox arrives and starts chirping, causing our reincarnated girl to realize that the danger is on the way. She sees an evil aura coming from the bushes, and upon seeing it closely with Saul's power, realizes that it's an evil frost spider. Just then, the frost spider charges at them. While our reincarnated girl and her father look in horror and wonder what they should, and asks Nema to come to him, and she immediately agrees. However, she revealed that the frost spider was very hungry and panicked, 
Just then, the Hobgoblin steps in and announces that he will fight the Frost Spider. Nemma, seeing this, tries to intervene, but her father stops her, saying that she cannot handle this matter as it is a battle between the strongest. Suddenly, the Frost Spider attacks the Hobgoblin with one of her legs, and the Hobgoblin blocks with his powerful hands. They throw punches and kicks at each other, but no one is able to land a decisive blow. Just then, the Frost Spider tries to kill him with her poison, but the Hobgoblin jumps away to the sky and lands a powerful punch on one of her eyes, destroying it. This makes our reincarnated girl believe that it is a hardcore life or death battle for survival. After that punch, the Frost Spider goes unconscious, and the Hobgoblin raises his hand, believing he has won the battle. However, to his shock, the Frost Spider gets up and quickly jumps, landing on the body of the Hobgoblin. Nemma, looking at this horrifying sight, believes that if the Hobgoblin loses this battle, her father will incinerate all the goblins without a second thought, so that the humans can live in peace. Suddenly, blood comes out below the body of the Frost Spider, and the Hobgoblin picks her up on his shoulder. After a brief sigh, he throws her away to the other side. The Hobgoblin then thanks Nemma and reveals that he managed to avoid being crushed by the Frost Spider because of the protective spell she put on him. Nemma, after seeing that he is okay, feels happy but then feels something unusual and wonders what it is. Just then, her hands glow up with green magical energy, and the Frost Spider asks her to help her out, revealing that she wants to protect her child. Suddenly, her child comes out of her body, and Nemma, after seeing it, believes that she was pregnant, and this was the reason behind her panic. She explains that to feed her young, she needed to eat lots and lots, but the ecosystem was messed up since the goblin's arrival and she wasn't able to catch any food for her young. Heartbroken at this, Nemma cries and believes that she is a victim too. She then puts her hand on the frost spider's body and prays to God. She asks that if she goes to the afterlife or another life, she wishes to live in peace. Dalen comes in and hugs her, but our reincarnated girl cries out loud. She says that if it were possible to save the frost spider, she really wished she could have, but she didn't because she was too scared of the responsibility. However, she vows that she will become stronger so that every living creature can live happily. The Hobgoblin looks at her with a sad face but then suddenly begins emitting light from his body. Nemma and the others wonder what is going on. After the light fades away, the Hobgoblin transforms into a human with elf-like ears and two horns on his forehead. Nemma, shocked at this, wonders who he is, but her father informs her that he might have evolved. She then asks the holy beast fire dragon about this, to which he tells her that goblins cannot evolve into this state because the highest order of goblin species is the hobgoblin. He also tells her that he knows some creatures with the name Oni who live in Wajite, and possess human bodies and horns. She wonders what an Oni is, to which Saul informs her that he wants to see him for himself, and that's why he will visit her tomorrow. She then looks at his body and believes that he looks like the flashier people in Japan. But her father gets her away and asks his knights to cover his naked body with clothes. After that, she teaches him how to wear clothes and then thanks him for saving their lives with a hug, which causes her father to ask her to get away from him and go to bed. Suddenly, the child of the frost spider comes to her and Nemma asks if it wants to come with her. The young frost spider jumps on her arm, causing our reincarnated girl to believe that it wants to go with her. She then tells her that her mother not only protected her but also made her stronger, so she gives her a name, Gracia, saying that the word Gracia means thank you. Whenever she says the word Gracia, it means she is saying thank you to the frost spider for making her strong. Suddenly, a white mark appears on the head of the young frost spider, causing Nemma to believe that she tamed another powerful beast. The next morning, the hobgoblin, who now transformed into a human shape, starts clearing the area with the help of little goblins. Nemma asks him if he will release all the captured humans, to which he obliges, saying that he promised her and will keep his word. Just then, a healing knight carrying a white rabbit arrives and greets her, revealing that the white rabbit is fine now. She thanks him for healing his injuries and asks her father if she can bring this to her house. Dalen tells her that some things in this world are best to stay where they belong. He explains that when wild animals are kept by humans, it distorts their disposition, and due to this, they might lose their guard or become unable to find food on their own. He asks Nemma to think of this as ripples and further explains that if she takes that rabbit home, it will form a small ripple in this world. After that, the ripple will continue forever, bumping into other ripples and swallowing them or getting swallowed up, which will affect the world. 
he reveals that all these phenomena shape this world, and it doesn't matter how big or small they are, they all impact the world in the same fashion. So, he believes that fewer ripples will make the world better, and when there are no ripples, the world will be in peace. Hearing this, Nema gets mad and thinks that she wants to pet all the fluffy creatures. If someone gets in their way, she will take advantage of her father's authority and Saul's magic to destroy them. But then, she realizes that this is not good and lets the white rabbit go. Just then, she shows him the young frost spider and asks if she can take her home. Daland, in a horrified state, reveals that it is not an animal but a monster. The hobgoblin guy asks them if they know about animals and monsters. He explains that monsters are failures and are called defective, revealing that goblins are defective versions of humans and frost spiders are defective versions of spiders. He reveals that monsters are weak, and in order for one to get stronger, they must be given a name by someone powerful. This causes the world to recognize them as an individual, and in this way, they can use magic and receive blessings from spirits. Hearing this, Nema asks the hobgoblin guy about his name, and he reveals that he has no name. This causes our reincarnated girl to go into shock and wonder how he can be so strong without a name. The hobgoblin guy reveals that he is jealous of the young frost spider, which already has a mark on its head, meaning it already got a name. This revelation causes Dalen to shout at Nema, believing that she tamed the young frost spider with her powers and has no choice but to take it to their home. They then say goodbye to the goblins and head to the village. At the village, the kidnapped people meet their families, and Nema asks Nino and Pino which family they belong to. They reveal they belong to the Iriga family. Hearing this, Dalen reveals that he knows their family and asks his knights to safely escort them to the Iriga family. Just then, Pino thanks her for her help, and Nino gives her a scary look, causing our reincarnated girl to believe that she hates her. However, to her shock, Nino asks her to visit her home sometime, and Nema happily hugs her and reveals that she will definitely come. The next day, Saul arrives, and Nema immediately hugs him. She begins petting him, believing in how perfectly smooth he is, but Saul informs her that the hobgoblin guy is not an oni, and he has remnants of elemental power. However, our reincarnated girl does not pay any attention to the words he is saying and continues touching his skin. This causes Saul to yell at her and then informs her that he can use elemental powers like the holy beasts, to which the hobgoblin guy confirms after revealing that he can see it but does not know how to use elemental powers. Just then, one of the knights activates his magic and makes a clay doll with his earth magic. She asks the hobgoblin guy to do the same. And when he does so, he destroys the clay doll just with his voice, shocking Nema and the others. Nema then asks if he can use other magic elements too, to which he shows them all the magic elements, including fire, wind, water, and earth. Seeing this, Nema says that this will help her out in her plan. But her father hears this and asks what this plan is about. She informs him that she has figured out a way for humans and monsters to live peacefully together but will tell him later. After that, she realizes that the hobgoblin guy is a new creature, so she gives him a name called Shinky, which causes her to go into shock after the taming mark appears on his forehead. She yells in shock and wonders why this always keeps happening to her but believes that this is the work of God. Just then, she apologizes to Shinky for this, but he bows to her and reveals that he and all the goblins led by him will swear loyalty to her. Since she gave him a name, he will call her a master. This causes our reincarnated girl to blush and thanks him for this. At the village, our reincarnated girl tells her father that her earlier remarks about humans and monsters living together are that monsters are losing their places to live, and they just need to make new places for them. She explains that they can put up a barrier on the mountains where no one lives, and they have all the monsters who have lost their homes move in there, and if the monsters overpopulate, then they'll make it a training area for the Adventurers Guild. In this way, they can cover the expenses by placing inns and shops at the base of the mountain. Plus, adventurers and monsters can keep each other in check. Dalen believes that this will lead to monsters killing most of the humans for survival, but Nema tells him that this is all a part of the struggle to survive. Hearing this, Dalen smiles and says that this is a brilliant idea, and he will think about this. After that, he asks Shinky to come with him to their next inspection destination, saying that his elemental powers may be a great help. Plus, he has vast knowledge about monsters. Shinky, with a sad face, reveals that he wants to help but he cannot leave the nest for too long. He then calls Nema his master and asks her to give the next strongest goblin a name. Believing that, in this way, the new strongest goblin can protect the nest alongside the spirits, 
and he himself can rest easy. Nema, shocked at being called master, tells Shinki that she prefers him as a friend not a master, asks him to treat her like a lady. Hearing this, Shinki agrees and says that from this moment, he will call her my lady. After that, he takes her to his nest and introduces her to the next strongest goblin, which is also a girl. He reveals that the girl goblin is his right hand and will evolve into a hobgoblin after a few more hunting trips. Nema, looking at the girl goblin, thinks that she will evolve into an ugly hobgoblin, but then grabs her hands and believes that despite this, she will look cute. She then asks the goblin girl what she likes, to which the goblin girl states that she likes flowers. Hearing this, she looks at the flowers which are from the Valley of the Lily and are called Suzuran flowers, and happily gives her a name, Suzuko. Suddenly, another goblin arrives and asks Nema to give him a name too. Suzuko reveals that he is very weak and Nema asks why he wants a name. To which, the goblin reveals that his last horde was wiped out by the monsters, and he wants to become stronger so that he can protect his current horde. Nema, hearing this, wonders what he should do, believing that he is very weak and may not grow stronger, but thinks that she cannot give up on him just because he may not grow. She then tells him that if he is able to hunt down a giant boar by himself, which is a lot stronger than him and might kill him, before they come back from their journey she will give him a name. Saying this, Nema believes that this threat will cause him to back off from this task. But to her shock, the goblin smiles and agrees to her request. Hearing this, our reincarnated girl smiles, believing that the goblin will live up to his promises, and then comes up with a name that will make him stronger, revealing that his name from this moment will be Tauki. This causes the goblin to blush and thank Nema for giving him a name. After that, Nema and Shinki leave and head towards the forest. On the way, Shinki asks Nema about always being surrounded by people and creatures, to which she reveals that she loves her family and all the creatures around her. This causes Shinki to give a sad look and state that his only family was his older brother who was killed in battle. However, to his relief, Nema gives him a pat on his face and says that he is now her friend. After that, they head toward the town of Cass in the Parzith Proxy. On the way, Daland asks Shinki to give him directions about that town, and he happily agrees. Shinki informs him about the path, which he and his horde come, including three connecting mountains and a rough river. Hearing this, he shows them the map of the Osp Domain, revealing that the red-marked areas are the ones where monsters are attacking the villagers, and believes that the troubles with the monsters might be man-made. He then informs Nema that he will leave her with her brother Ralph, who is about to arrive in the cast town and will take over his duty, while he will go to the domain to find more information about the monster's attack. Hearing this, Nema smiles and states that she can't wait to spend more time with her brother. They arrive in the cast town, and Daelin talks with the mayor of the town. But to his dismay, Nema leaves and heads to the nearby guild with Shinki. There, she meets a girl named Bella, who, upon seeing Shinki, reveals that beast people are not allowed in this town. But Nema, with a deep sigh after realizing that Bella doesn't know about the identity of Shinki, states that they are only visiting the guild just to see how it looks and will leave soon. Hearing this, Bella apologizes for her rude behavior and tells Nema that she will show her everything inside the guild. They then sit at the table, and Belle begins telling them about the adventurer guild and its strict rules. Suddenly, a man gets up from his seat and yells at others, saying that the guild cannot just sit back and ignore this injustice. He reveals that the mayor has put up a small goblin horde job with three times the standard reward, and his son accepted it. He reveals that the mayor is using the money to feed his own family, and not to help the other adventurers who are putting their lives on the line to protect this kingdom. Hearing this, Nema feels suspicious and asks Bell about the man, to which Bell reveals that his name is Heelrin Duet, and he used to work in the town office as one of the town chairmen, but due to not getting along with the mayor, they fired him from his post. Hearing this, Nema believes that something wrong is going on in this town and heads towards him. She grabs him by his trousers and asks him to tell her everything, but Duet hesitates, saying that he has no time for children. This causes Nema to get angry but she takes a deep sigh and states that she thought she could be of some service to him. Hearing this, Duet grabs her arm and asks what she is talking about, to which Nema reveals that her name is Nefertima Osf and she is the second daughter of Dayland Osf and might help him in meeting with her father. Hearing this, Duet apologizes for his rude behavior and introduces himself as a new financial auditor of this town, revealing that his job is to collect all the details about financial activities of this town. He then tells Nema that just like the Domain, monster attacks are increasing in the Parazith proxy, but in Cass, they have barely had any attacks. He explains that the mayor made false reports claiming fatalities and earned five gold coins sent as restitution. 
He further explains that they only had monster activity last year where goblins attacked the nearby town, and they solved it with the help of adventurers. But adventurers didn't make it up. Nema asks what happened to them, to which Duit shows her a map of the domain, saying that there are thousands of kobolds living in the area where the adventurers were sent, and believes that the head of the town must have sent the adventurers to handle the activity of the kobolds. Hearing about kobolds, our reincarnated girl Nema believes that if there are thousands of kobolds, that means they must have a leader, and if all goes well, she may be able to pull the kobolds into her plan. However, to everyone's shock, she yells out and says that she wants to pet them. Just then, she tells Duet that she wants him to come with her to see her father, and he immediately agrees. She also calls out to Knox and gives her a message, telling her to give this to her father. Hearing that they are heading to the mayor's office, Belle wants to join in, saying that this may not be her job, but she wants to help this town, to which our reincarnated girl happily agrees. They then head towards the mayor's office, but find Daland there. Daland, with an angry look, asks Nema if she has any excuses after wandering off without permission. Nema, with a sad look, apologizes to her father for her wrongdoing, saying that she just wanted to see the adventurer's guild. However, Dalen reveals that she has behaved foolishly and says that this might be too early to present her to the world as a duke's daughter. Nema, with a shocked look, states that her father never treated her like this before and never seen him upset with her like this, but believes that he has every right to be mad with her because she ran off without his permission and didn't even keep her guards, wondering if something had happened to her. The ones who would have been punished were those who were tasked with her. Realizing this, Nema cries, but Ralph suddenly grabs her and tells his father that he is not allowed to make his sister cry. Hearing this, Nema cries even more, believing that no matter how wrong she is, her brother and sister always take her side and take the scolding with her. Just then, Dalen clears her tears with a handkerchief, but to her shock, it turned out to be the brute prince Will, who arrives with the sky tiger Lars. Seeing the prince for the first time, everyone gets shocked and bows down to his majesty. When asked what he's doing here, the prince reveals that he had some work in the town, and after finishing it, he was told by Ralph that Nema is already here, so he decided to come here and play a little with Nema. Suddenly, Dalen sees Belle and Duet and wonders who they are, to which Nema tells him that they are from the town and want to tell him something, revealing that they need his help. Just then, Duet informs him about everything, and with an angry look, Dalen heads inside the mayor's office. There, he meets with the mayor and asks him about the things that happened in the town. The mayor tries to deny it, but Dalen doesn't fall for his lies and immediately fires him from the post of the mayor. This causes our reincarnated girl Nema to feel at ease and starts playing with Lars. The next day, as Dalen talks to other knights, he thanks Duet for providing valuable insights and believes that his investigative abilities are superb. He asks Duet to help him out in his work, but Duet declines by saying he has no place to return to for work. Hearing this, Nema asks Duet and Belle to come with them on their mission, saying they can be very helpful in their plan. However, Daland informs them that if they get involved in their mission, they might find their lives at risk. He then tells them that he wants to keep this mission a secret and for this, he wants loyalty from each one of them, including the prince, to which everyone happily agrees. Daland then tells them about Nema's plan, and the brute prince has nothing but to laugh at this idea. He says that gathering all the monsters inside one place and then putting them against the humans might not be a good idea, but he thinks that God has given Nema incredible powers and believes she will be very useful in this mission. Just as he says all this, Daland appoints Ralph the new head of this mission, and he happily agrees. Suddenly, Shinky arrives, and Nema quickly hugs him. This moment doesn't sit well with Ralph, who, with a scary look, asks Nema who he is. Nema, with hesitation, reveals that Shinky used to be a hobgoblin before evolving into this mysterious creature, but now is her servant because she tamed him. He asks Daland how he had let this happen, but Daland tells him that before he can do anything, Shinky was already bound by his true name, and now Nema thinks of him as her bodyguard. After that, Nema asks Shinky about his trip to this area's goblins. Shinky tells her that he went to meet the goblins and found a group of 16 led by a hobgoblin. He explains that he tried to explain the plan, but they didn't listen, so he beat the hell out of them, and now they serve him. Hearing this, Nema is glad that the situation of goblins is handled, but then asks her father about the kobolds in Lennis City. Dalen reveals that he has information about some attacks in the area caused by the kobolds. However, the leader of the knights informs them that there are not a few but hundreds of kobolds in this area. They have split themselves into five groups, and each group has a specific duty, including guarding and scouting. 
Each group is commanded by a high kobold, and the one who is leading them all is said to have a higher rank of werewolf. When asked where they learned about this, the leader reveals that since they cannot handle these powerful monsters, they sought help from the Adventurer's Guild, and they provided them with this knowledge. Nemo, with a curious look, asks about the identity of the Adventurer's Guild leader, to which Dalen believes that someone from the Guild might be stopping these informations from coming to the Royal Capital, revealing that they haven't heard anything till now. To this, the leader tells them that his friends informed him that the regional commander used to work at central headquarters before being stationed here on reassignment. This revelation sparked curiosity in Nema's mind and caused her to think that the regional commander must be the one behind all this. Not only Nema, this revelation also caused Dalen to think that he cannot trust anyone as he believes that their enemies are many, and they still don't know about them. Just then, Belle comes in with a great idea, saying she can provide intelligence reports from inside the Adventurer's Guild. However, the Brute Prince shuts her down, saying that not just in the Adventurer's Guild, their enemies might be in provinces and the kingdom too. This tricky revelation caused Nema to think that her plan might not work out, but Ralph cheers her up, saying that their father is always one step ahead and he will do everything to get this plan done, to which our reincarnated girl replies with a cute smile. With this, Daeland informs them that since they don't know about their enemies, they will now call them Renohark and their attack on the monsters will be called the Southern Province Incident. He then asks the knights to help his son in this mission, saying that he will return to the royal capital tomorrow, and the knights happily agree. Their support reaches up to Nema's heart, and she thanks them, saying that she will look forward to working with all of them. After that, Daelin tells Nema to take rest, saying that the adults have some matters to discuss. Our reincarnated girl happily obliges and wants to nap with Lars, but Ralph stops her, saying that Lars is Will's holy beast. This causes Nema to get angry and state that if they don't let her nap with Lars, she will then go instead with Shinky, to which our nerdy boys take Shinky away with them. Nema then tries to put Gracia on Lars' back, but she hesitates, revealing that she is afraid of him. However, she falls in love with him after landing on his back. With this, Nema also jumps on his back, and they happily take a nap. The next day, as they head towards Lennis City, the Brute Prince wonders what they should call Nema's plan. Ralph comes up with an idiotic name and the Brute Prince shuts him down, saying that they should call this mission the Shiana Project, revealing that in Celestion, it means strength and courage. The Brute Prince then thanks the God of Divine Creation for giving amazing powers to Nema and feels jealous that he has taken a liking to her. However, Nema informs him that it's not just her, but God loves us all. These kind words cause the Brute Prince to believe that God also loves him, otherwise, he would not have been born into a royal family. At the royal capital, Daeland informs his family that Nema is traveling with Ralph and the prince for a secret mission. But to his shock, his words do not go well with Karna, who upon hearing it, scolds her father for letting Nema go on a dangerous mission despite her being only five years old. Daeland reveals that two holy beasts are with her, but his wife, upon looking at his face, reveals that Nema is up to something else. Daeland then tells them everything and Kula feels happy that her daughter is doing wonderful work, saying that just like humans, monsters are also the creation of God, and they have the right to live. After that, she tells Karna that they are hiring some bodyguards from the Adventurer's Guild, who will not only protect Karna but also help her increase her magic abilities. However, she denies it by saying she only wants to go with her sister. Just then, Kula informs her that she received a letter from their uncle Philip, who is on the way to the royal capital tomorrow. This revelation cheers her up, and Dalen says that since Philip is a purple rank adventurer, he will be a perfect instructor for Karna. With her spirits now up, Karna agrees to her parents' request and states that she will do her best to become powerful and help her family. Just as they arrive at Lennis City, Nema looks at the forest and thinks about kobolds, saying that she wants to see them immediately. The leader of the knights greets the city guards and shows them the symbol of the royal family, who upon seeing it, quickly opens the gate but informs them that their captain wants to meet with the prince. Hearing this, the brute prince and Ralph leave Nema inside the carriage and head towards the captain. Nema, angered at this, asks for Wind Spirit's help and begins listening to their conversation. The captain happily greets them and introduces himself as Dylan Noctes, the commander of the Parzeth district office, and a member of the First Legion. He informs them that they need to go back to the royal capital as soon as possible because this area is dangerous due to rogue kobolds. But Ralph tells him that they are here on his father, Duke Dalen's orders to monitor the sightings of the monsters. The captain understands this and takes them to the proxy lord, which causes our reincarnated girl to feel happy, believing that everything went according to her plan. 
After that, they meet the proxy lord of the city, who was feeling unwell due to not being able to sleep for three days. He informs them that kobolds attack at night, and their knights cannot stop them, so in order to overcome them, he sought adventurers' guild support, and they are currently putting together a powerful squad. When asked when they will arrive, the proxy lord reveals that they will soon after their leader Red H. Lada arrives. The brute prince says that he knew H. Lada back then when they were Blue H. Lada, which caused our reincarnated girl to believe they must be very strong. However, to her shock, she also realizes that if they are strong, that means they will wipe out all the cobbles. With this, she begins panicking, causing Ralph to understand her feelings, and then asks the proxy lord to show them the way towards the cobbles, believing that before H. Lada arrives, they will solve this situation with Nema's powers. Nema thanks her brother for this, and they head to the town. On the way, they see some kids kicking a lonely puppy. She quickly scolds them for hurting him, but one of the boys says that his father told him to hurt every dog they see because they are their biggest enemies. Nema states that his father must be telling him about kobolds who look like dogs, but tells him that it's shameful to attack someone completely defenseless. These words don't go well with the boy, and he tries to slap her, but the knights quickly stop him. Nema then reveals that strength is not for bullying others, but it should be used to protect the weak. She informs them that they will not hurt them because they don't use strength to hurt others. Instead, she asks them to give her the puppy, and they quickly agree. The idiotic kid, angered at Nema's words, states that a noble like her cannot understand their feelings. However, a reincarnated girl shuts him down, saying that true power is not just physical strength. She explains that if he can stay on the right path without becoming underhanded or a coward and gain honorable strength like these knights, he will become a wonderful man who can protect what's important to him. Hearing this, the boy runs away after saying his name and vowing that he will become strong so that he can protect everyone. With this, our reincarnated girl Nema asks Ralph to heal the injuries of the puppy, and he quickly agrees. However, after healing the puppy, the puppy looks at the forest, and Nema believes he's not someone's pet. Just then, Shinky informs her that he is the pup of a kobold, causing everyone to believe that even the kobolds love Nema too. The kobold cub wants to go back to his mother, but the brute prince informs Nema that if they do so, they will be considered kidnappers and might get attacked by the kobold horde. However, a reincarnated girl, seeing the cub's teary eyes, vows that she will give back this cub to his mother. Guys, please do 3000 likes and subscribe to support the channel. Please, it will help me create more videos. The next day, as they head to the forest to deliver the cub of the kobold, they find something unusual happening in the city. Dewitt points out to the city bell and reveals that it's the noon hour, and the bell hasn't rung yet. He explains that ringing the bell to signify the hour is required by the law even if there's a state of emergency. He then informs our reincarnated girl that he feels this town is hiding something and he wants to investigate it. Nemo, understanding his feelings, tells him to go ahead and do the investigation. She warns him not to do anything rash, and if something happens, he immediately comes back to her. With this, they split from the Duet group and head to the forest, just to deliver the kobold's cub to his mother. On the way, Nema asks the cub if they are going the right way, to which the cub happily says yes. However, he wants them to move their legs and hurry up as he does not want to wait anymore to meet his mother. Seeing that the cub of the kobold is in a hurry, Shinky picks up Nema and starts moving ahead, saying that he does not want his master to get tired. But this move doesn't sit well with Ralph and the Brute Prince, who want to punish him for this. As they move ahead, they hear some noises coming from the nearby bushes. The knights go to check them, but upon seeing, it turns out to be a little slime. Nema, after looking at the slime, believes that her body should be super squishy, and wonders what will happen if she squeezes her. Just as she is thinking this, Shinky tells her that the slime wants their help. He reveals that he understands most of the monster's language and this slime is saying that her comrade has weakened up and she wants them to help her. Hearing this, Nema believes that they should help her comrade and save her life, and for this to happen, she asks Ralph for his permission, to which he happily agrees. With this, Nema asks the slime to take them to her comrade, and just as they follow her, they come upon a large slime which is filled with lots of colors. Nema wonders what it is, to which one of the knights tells her that it's a parent slime, which can produce countless tiny ones. He explains that the colorful things inside her body are baby slimes which she is about to produce, but wonders why parent slimes only live in warm regions, then what this slime is doing in this cold area. He reveals that cold areas are very dangerous for them, and if she gives birth to her little ones here, 
her and her kids' lives will be in danger. Hearing this, Nema asks the slime to not give birth here, but she can't do anything, to which the brute prince reveals that once slimes become parent slimes, they turn parasitic, which means they cannot move according to their own will. Nema wonders what they should do as she does not want the slime to end up her life here. But to her surprise, the brute prince informs her that slimes cannot reproduce if they are inside someone's body. Shocked at this, Nema asks the slime if she gives her a place in her body, will she eat her or not, to which the slime says no. But when Nema asks her to get control over Shinki's body, she reveals that she will eat him alive. Hearing this, Nema believes that due to her powers to tame monsters and beasts, she is stuck in this situation and the slime will only take a place in her body. However, Shinki informs her that if the slime takes over her inner parts of the body, she then will not have to go to the bathroom because whatever she eats in the future will be digested by the slime. Hearing this, Nema believes that with this, she can eat as much as she wants and will not gain any weight. So, with this realization, Nema decides to give the slime a place in her body, and warns her that her life is filled with a lot of troubles. But the slime doesn't care about this. With this, Nema gives her a name called Shizuku, and is successfully able to tame her. After that, the slime goes inside her body and takes a place inside it, causing no harm to Nema. Ralph asks if she is okay and Nema reveals that she is fine, but she can feel the consciousness of Shizuku inside her. The Brute Prince also asks what they should do with the other slime, revealing that she will become a parent slime soon. Our reincarnated girl also tames her after giving her a name called Haku, and informs all of them that they will take this slime with them and will find a safe place where she can reproduce her babies with ease. Just then, the cobbled cub comes to her, wondering if she forgot about him, but Nema tells him that she was helping someone and did not forget about him. With this, they head again to the forest, but this time, with the determination to find the kobolds' cub mother at any cost. On the way, the group tries to locate the energy of the kobolds with their magic, but to their surprise, they don't find anything. They ask Lars for his assistance in this task, but he reveals that despite being a holy beast, he cannot locate a magical aura which is hidden inside the forest. Nema believes that there must be someone in this forest who is powerful enough to hide them without being noticed by humans and even holy beasts. She asks Lars for some assistance, and he happily agrees after releasing some of his energy into the forest. The Brute Prince asks Nema if she finds a way to locate kobolds, to which our reincarnated girl tells them that in this forest, she believes there is a thing that is not a human spirit or a monster, but something else which is beyond their imagination, and this thing could tell them about the location of the kobolds. She also tells them that the Brute Prince once told her about this thing when he read her a book at the palace. She believes that the reason they are not finding the location of the kobolds is that that thing does not want them to find it out and that's why they have been going around in circles. Just then, they come upon a tree where a lot of animals are sitting on it, and our reincarnated girl believes that this must be the place they were looking for. Suddenly, a memory came up in her mind when the brute prince told her that there would be times when certain rare creatures that live a long life would evolve into something that would protect a territory with special powers, and these beings would be called guardians. Realizing this, Nema believes that this tree is the guardian tree which is not a magical creature, nor a living creature, or spirit. She then introduces herself to the forest guardian and apologizes to him for causing trouble on the way. The guardian replies to her, saying that he does not want her apology but is surprised that she is a royal child, has a holy beast, and some monsters. The guardian wants to know her identity, but Nema, in her mind, thinks that she cannot reveal her true identity to him as she was reincarnated into this world by the god himself. The guardian then asks what she wants from him, to which she picks up the kobold's cub and tells him that they are looking for his mother and want to know their hideout. She tells him that once she finds out their hideout, she will give this child back to his mother and leave the area at once. However, to her shock, the guardian reveals that he cannot share this information with her, as there were humans who persistently pursued the kobolds until they were driven into these woods. He reveals that he pitied them after seeing them in a dire situation and then hid them from the humans. Nema states that she knows the humans have done terrible things which are not acceptable, but all she wants is to give this child back to his mother and to negotiate with the kobolds. When asked about the negotiation, she informs him that they are thinking about moving kobolds from this area to another. She explains that the leader of the Lenis city is sending some adventurers to this forest to eliminate all kobolds and the ones who are helping them. She states that the situation is very dire and if the war breaks out between kobolds and humans, then they won't be able to stop it. Nemer reveals that the only thing she wants is to help those kobolds, and for this, she is willing to do anything. 
The Guardian, after understanding her feelings, decides to help her out but warns her that if she ever deceives him, then she will not be able to leave this forest alive. Hearing this, Nema says that she can swear on her name, but the Guardian believes in her and does not want her to swear. With this, the Guardian opens a way for them and tells Nema to come see him after completing her task and she happily agrees. With this situation solved, Nema wants to bring some food for the kobolds and asks the group if they know what kind of food kobolds like. But just before they can answer, all the monsters and beasts begin sensing something evil. Suddenly, a bug tries to attack Nema, but Nox comes in and eliminates it with a brutal kick. Lars then turns it to pieces, and after seeing it, Shinki reveals that these bugs are called mamashi, and they are very delicious to eat. After roasting them, the group hesitates to eat it, but upon trying it, finds it very yummy and delicious, including our reincarnated girl Nema too. With this, Nema thinks of a plan and asks all the knights and Lars to hunt down the mamashi if they see any, revealing that she will give them to the kobolds as a gift. After hunting down some mamashi, they come upon a dark area where some kobolds try to attack them. Nema tells them that they came here with the blessings of the Guardian Forest and only want to talk to their leader, but the kobolds didn't believe in her words. She then shows them the food she brought and reveals that this is all for them. Seeing this, the kobolds agree and tell her to follow them. After that, they come upon an area where all the kobolds were doing their usual day-to-day -day activities, and Nema, after seeing them, believes that this is a fluffy paradise heaven. Just then, one of the kobolds approaches her and asks what the humans are doing here. Nema tells her that they are here to return this cub to his mother, and the female reveals that this cub is indeed from their pack. However, she asks the cub what he was doing outside the forest, to which the cub reveals that other cubs left him out alone. The female kobolds get mad and want to scold the other cubs, but our reincarnated girl stops her and tells her that they have brought a lot of food for them and wants them to eat it. Nema thinks in her mind that after they eat all of the food, they will trust her and this is when she will negotiate with them. Guys, please do 3000 likes and subscribe to support the channel. Please, it will help me create more videos. After giving all the food, Nema tells the kobold woman to have some food too as she has not eaten anything yet. The kobold woman thanks her for giving them food, but then tells Nema to leave this place at once. Nema wonders if she holds a grudge against humans, and the kobold woman, named Sicily, informs her that numerous packs were attacked at once by humans and many of the kobolds died due to this attack. Hearing this, Nema realizes that everything the forest guardian told her is true, and with this, she informs her that an extermination squad is coming soon to annihilate them, so it's very dangerous for them to stay here. Sicily says that she knows as the stars already told her about this. She reveals that she is a star reader, a priestess who is able to read the fortune of others. She tells Nema that they will fight with humans and win this war, but Nema informs her that there is a way to end this war without fighting with each other. However, Sicily does not trust her and tells her to leave this place as she has no intention of trusting humans. Just then, Ralph and the others come in and tell Nema to leave as they need to head back to the city before dark. Nema, with a sad look, leaves but informs Sicily she will visit them tomorrow. Just as she leaves, Sicily looks at the stars and sees a star of the Savior standing next to their star. She wonders what this is about and thinks that the words Nema told her might be true, but quickly dismisses them. The next day, Ralph receives a letter from his father and informs Nema that their sister Karna is headed their way. Nema believes that this might not be a good thing as whenever the three siblings gathered, chaos occurred. Just then, the brute prince informs them that the king has passed a new decree. He explains that with this decree, the king has given him authority to arrest those royal knights who are not doing their duties and might get in their way in this project. Happy at this, Nema says that this might be a good thing for them because in this way, the brute prince will get to stay with them until the end, and no one will be able to stop their project. The Brute Prince agrees with this, but then gets asked by Nema to find out about the Duet. The Brute Prince asks the spirits for their help, and they inform him that the Duet is spying on someone to find more information about the culprits behind the extermination squad. With this, Nema again goes to the Kobolds area along with the food and gives it to them. Sicily is surprised that she visited them again, but gets shocked after seeing Gracia and Haku on her shoulders. Sicily asks what those monsters are doing on her shoulder, and Nema informs her that these monsters needed her help, so she decides to help them out. Seeing this, Sicily asks her about the Shiana project, and Nema, upon hearing it, quickly tells her everything about it and reveals that the kobolds might not trust her but she really wants to help them. Sicily, with a sad face, looks at the other kobolds and tells Nema that all she wants is to protect those kobolds and her little sister, 
whom she is the only family she has left after her other family members were wiped out by the humans. Seeing this, Nema tells Sicily to pet Haku as it will help her calm down, and she happily does so. After that, Sicily cannot believe there is a human in this world who wants to save monsters, but Nema tells her that she doesn't believe in races and tribes, and she just wants to save everyone who is in trouble. With this, she asks Sicily if her tribe will participate in this project, and Sicily happily agrees. Nema, happy at this, believes that since their first step is success, they will soon be able to help out all the monsters. Just then, one of the leaders of the Kobold tribe comes in and thanks Nema for saving one of their pups, but our reincarnated girl does not care about his thanks, and the thing she wants is to touch his fluffy body. The kobold introduces himself as Hanley and reveals that he belongs to the healer family. Hearing this, Nemo wonders how kobolds can use healing magic, and Hanley tells her that there are two types of kobold bloodlines, hunting and lifestyle. He explains that hunting bloodlines excel with weapons and physical abilities, while lifestyle bloodlines excel at craftsmanship and things useful in daily life, including healing magic. Hearing this, Nema raises a question and asks why some kobolds walk on four legs and some on two, to which Hanley tells her that baby kobolds lack the proper muscles and train their shoulders and legs to walk on four legs. But once they become adults, they are able to stand on two legs. Just then, as Hanley goes on, Nema thinks to herself that she cannot resist herself from the fluffiness anymore. With this, she starts hugging Hanley and touching his fluffy body, revealing that she hasn't felt this fluffiness in forever. Hanley, shocked at this, wonders what's going on and asks Nema to stop it, but our reincarnated girl quickly refuses. Suddenly, Ralph and the Brute Prince arrive and tell Nema to leave Hanley, but Nema tells them to try it out as they will also feel the fluffiness too. With this, the two also try it out and find it fluffy too. But Hanley, who has had enough of this, quickly backs away, saying that his body is not for play. Just then, all of the kobold leaders arrive, and upon hearing Nema's plan, agree to join Project Shiana. Nema, happy at this, says that this problem is solved, and now, they have to figure out how to handle the extermination squad. One of the leaders believes that they cannot evacuate now and if they do so, they will have no resources and food to save their family. However, Nema wants to face them head on. When asked how, Nema explains that they will fight the extermination squad with everything they have got, and then trick them to gather at one place, and with this, they will try to run away, and with cobbled speed, they won't be able to catch them. Suddenly, a little girl with cat-like ears and tail tells everyone not to trust this human girl as she will only lead them to their demise. Sicily scolds her for getting her tongue into the adult's business, and also reveals that this is her little sister. Nemo wonders how she can be her sister as she does not look like a cobbled, but the brute prince informs that this girl is a beast person and belongs to a star wolf tribe. However, our reincarnated doesn't care about this, all she wants is to touch her cute ears and fluffy tail. The little girl then tells Nema that all of the humans are greedy and cruel, and because of them, they are suffering right now. Nema says it is true that some humans are cruel but she is here to help. She asks the little girl if she has a better idea to save this pack, but the girl tells her that she has no idea as no one tells her anything about it because she is a kid. Sicily tries to shut her down but Nema stops her and asks the little to share everything she has in her mind. The little girl then cries and yells that she wants to fight humans so that she can protect her tribe. Hearing this, Nema asks the little girl to join her squad, revealing that in this way, she will be safest by her side and her sister will not be worried about her. Just as the little girl starts thinking about this offer, our reincarnated girl cannot stop her hands and starts petting her head, and believes that once they get close to each other, she will touch her tail, and ears too. Hearing this, Sicily tells her to stay on Nema's side and protect her from anything, revealing that she is their last hope, and the beast girl happily obliges. Nema says that she does not need any savior as she has her brother Ralph and the brute prince to protect her, but Sicily tells her about the stars and how they told her that Nema will be their savior, so she does not want her to get hurt at any cost. She says that without Nema, they would not have been here and the talk between them would not have happened. After that, as the kobolds talk to each other, Nema asks Ralph to infiltrate the extermination squad. When asked why, Nema tells him that in this way, he will be able to avoid unnecessary casualties with his healing magic. Hearing this, Ralph agrees, and the kobolds start getting ready themselves for the battle. Just then, one of the kobolds named Fika, who is also a brother to the little cub, tells Nema he wants to join their group. Nema asks why, and he tells her that he is a messenger and will prove helpful for her in the battle, and our reincarnated girl happily agrees. With this, Nema assigns the chosen kobolds and the knights to their roles and tells them to be careful as she does not want them to get into any trouble. 
After that, they meet the leader of the extermination squad and tell him that they have something important to discuss with him. The leader agrees and takes them to his room. On the way, Nema spots Duet serving as a servant, but he stops Nema from revealing his identity. Nema believes there must be something fishy going on here and that's why Duet is disguising like this. Before heading to the room, she slowly tells Duet to meet her at night. In the room, Ralph informs the leader that he wants to join the extermination squad, revealing that he might be very helpful to save innocent lives. Just then, a horrified knight says something in the leader's ear, and he quickly leaves the room with him. Shinky asks spirits for their help, and they inform him that some knights, who tried to break up the fight between some adventurers, got injured. A reincarnated girl Nema and the others go to check this out but get shocked after seeing them. Guys, please do 3000 likes and subscribe to support the channel. Please, it will help me create more videos. As they look at the wounded knights, Ralph realizes that two healers are not enough for the injuries and decides to help them out. A reincarnated girl Nema believes the situation is very awful and wonders how they can be so hurt. But the brute prince clarifies her doubts by saying that they were attacked by a carnivorous beast and the cuts on their bodies are from wind magic. Just as Ralph begins activating his healing magic, Nema prays to God and asks him to lend his strength to her brother so that he can save the lives of the innocent with his healing magic. With this, Ralph's magic reaches all the wounded knights and heals them instantly. The leader of the extermination squad can't believe his eyes at what he just witnessed but still praises Ralph for his incredible magic. However, the leader didn't realize that all the lives were saved not because of Ralph, but because of Nema, who prayed to God. Now that all the wounded knights are fine, Will asks one of the knights about the incident and how they ended up being wounded. The knight informs them that they encountered a carnivorous beast in the dungeon who attacked them from behind, and the beast was not alone as it was being controlled by a beast master. Nema is surprised at this revelation and can't believe how a man can control a carnivorous beast. But the brute prince thinks to himself that all the rumors about people controlling carnivorous beasts turn out to be true. At night, Nema heads to her brother's room but gets exhausted on the way after realizing that they have to face a new problem in the form of a beastmaster. She believes this stuff is very tough for a young child like her as she now has to solve both the beastmaster and the kobold's problem at the same time. With this, she enters her brother's room but spots do it already in there. She first inquires about his health and then asks if he has some inside information about the knights. Dewitt tells them that after entering the knighthood, he searched for information and found out that the regional commander has been stealing relief aid, embezzling funds, and taking bribes from the adventurers. The brute prince asks if he has any proof about this illegal flow of money, and Dewitt says he hasn't because regional knights are known for their shady management. Just then, the Brute Prince has an idea and informs everyone that the Knights regularly overorder supplies in case of emergencies and if they go through their orders and deliveries they might find something about them. With this, the Brute Prince assigns Duet for this mission and gives him his royal crest, telling him not to let go of the ones behind it at any cost. Nema thinks to herself that now Duet has the royal crest, his life will be in even more jeopardy as people will come after him. With this, she tells him to look after himself and only gather information about the culprits, as Will and the others will take care of the rest. Not only this, she summons the spirits and tells them to protect Duet's life at any cost, revealing that Duet is a friend of hers, who, upon hearing, thanks her for this generosity. After they leave, Ralph informs Will that the Red H. Lotta group will arrive tomorrow, and things will get ugly after that. But the Brute Prince tells him not to worry about Nema as she is the one who chose this path. The next day, the Brute Prince takes the lead and tells everyone about Nema's plan and how she wants to save the lives of all kobolds. He tells them about the extermination squad, the Red H. Lada group, and their members, and divides them into 15 groups, with each group consisting of two healer magicians. As he continues sharing all the information with the kobolds, Nema can't believe that will who is also a prince of this kingdom, is sacrificing the lives of his knights and people for the sake of monsters. She thinks to herself that this is all her plan and Will is not aware of it, and still, he agrees to go along with it at her request. Nema wonders if they will succeed or not but informs all the kobolds to prepare themselves for the battle and the casualties. Will tells her not to think about failures as she chooses the right path and sooner or later, this path leads her to success. Nema says she is worried about the innocent lives, but the brute prince tells her to be brave as her role in the battle is very crucial. Just then, Will receives a message from the wind spirit and informs Nema that the captured carnivorous beast and the beast master have been released and Ralph's squad investigates the ones behind it. Nema, after hearing this, thinks the situation is getting worse and wonders what will happen tomorrow. 
The next day, Nema is greeted by the two little kobolds, who hug and lick her. Just as they do so, one of the leaders of the fighters' kobold group tells Nema not to blame herself for this battle because they choose this fight for themselves. The leader reveals that he lives a long life, but now his only motive is to save the lives of his horde and Nema, which he believes will lead their horde to a safe place. Before leaving, he tells Nema to cheer up as her concentration is very crucial for this, and Nema, with a happy face, says she will do her best. They then meet all the kobolds, and Will informs them about the arrival of the Red H. Lod and the Beast Master. The little beast girl arrives and asks Nema about her health. Nema is happy that the little girl is worried about her, but she can't stop her hands from touching her fluffy ears. Just then, the beast girl hears something and informs everyone that the adventurers have entered their territory. In the meantime, the Red H. Lod group feels something strange is happening since they entered this forest. They believe that something keeps them away from reaching the location of the kobolds as they lose their way twice in this forest. Just then, according to Nema's plan, as they reach the checkpoint of the area, Shinky obscures their vision with dense fog, and Lars fires thunderous lightning at them, which almost takes out most of the adventurers in the front line and the remaining ones are taken care of by the kobolds. They also capture the Beastmaster and bind him to the tree, but to their surprise, he orders the carnivorous beast to finish them off. Just as the beast is about to do it, Gracia comes to their rescue and takes out not only the beast but the Beastmaster himself too with her venom. At first, Nema thinks that she might have killed them, but the kobolds tell them that she only paralyzed them, and Nema thanks her for helping them out. With this, Will starts their second phase and attacks the adventurers with woods, spikes, and stones, and even traps them inside a big hole where Haku dissolves all of their equipment. However, to their surprise, the Red H. Lod group is still able to survive their attack. One of their group members named Syria also brings back the fallen adventurers with her central cast spell. Nema believes the adventurers are strong and if they don't do anything now, they might reach out to them. With this, she asks Saul for his help but he refuses her by saying that if he casts a spell from his current location, it also harms her as well. Hearing this, Nema has no choice but to tell the kobolds to engage in a fight with the adventurers. They attack the adventurers with everything they have, but the Red H. Lod group proves too tough for them and takes out most of the kobolds with ease. One of the members of the group, who is a beast person and good at hearing, tells his leader Yauga that he senses humans nearby, and they might be helping the kobolds. Yauga also revealed that he heard the sound of a child too but thought it was his imagination. With this revelation, he tells the other knights to gather themselves as they are very near to destroying those kobolds. But upon seeing a big explosion from a fire magic, he tells them to back away for now. Yauga suggests to the leader of the extermination squad to retreat and prioritize defense while tending to the wounded knights, believing that their enemies are very tough. The leader doesn't agree with his idea as they have only eliminated half of the kobolds, but Yauga tells him that if they fight anymore, they will lose all of their knights. Just then, Sarah believes the kobolds are plotting some scheme and they are using this battle to hide something. Ralph asks what it could be, and Sarah informs him that the kobolds' last evolution form is werewolf, and they might be hiding those warriors in the back. Yauga then explains that monsters are divided into those who evolve and those who can't, and the ones who evolve with higher evolutions get unique strengths like magic and speed. He believes if werewolves with higher evolutions are among them, it means they have no chance to defeat them. Just then, Ralph puts a barrier among the group and tells them to swear upon their name that they will not repeat what he is going to tell them. After they swear upon their name, Ralph thanks them for this and informs them that there is an evil organization in the north who is hunting down the monsters and causing them to flee to their kingdom. They don't know about this organization but they call it Renohark. Yauga says he hears the voice of a child in the battle and believes that there are humans who are helping the kobolds. Ralph asks if they have seen the child, and when they say no, he tells them that the voice could be from their female warriors or some other beasts, and they might be imagining things. The leader of the extermination squad realizes that there might be more powerful monsters and beasts who are helping the kobolds, and if they fight anymore, they will lose their manpower. With this, the leader calls off the battle and tells his men to retreat. Just then, as Ralph takes a sigh of relief, they spot lightning hitting the ground nearby and upon reaching, see that all the kobolds are gone. Like and comment if you enjoy this video. Subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps, and tell me what anime recap you like to see next in the comments below.